Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brand Johnson for Used Boats TV, and today I'm going to take you for a ride on a beautiful Rinker 262 Bow Rider. So this video is to take those out with us that have interest in a 262 Rinker Bow Rider. We're going to do an a on-water instructional demonstration so that you can see how they operate and see maybe if this model is interesting to you. But also keep in mind, I sell boats at Heartland Marine. That's where I go to work every day. I've sold this boat sight unseen, so I'm taking my customer out with me via video test drive, but taking all of you guys out with me also to see how this boat operates. So we're gonna jump in, learn how to start it, learn about the buttons and switches and gauges, see what our good cruise speed is, see how to do some water sports, and see what the top end is on a Rinker 262 with a 62 mag MPI. And then at the end, we'll finish up some drone footage. Let's get started right now. But first, I'd like to introduce our channel. I've been passionately selling boats for over 19 years. The purpose of this channel is to help you and your family enjoy boats and boating just as much as my family and I enjoy it. So thanks to the help of my staff here at Heartland Marine and my sons, we've been able to successfully upload hundreds of boat reviews, instructional operation, help, and how-to videos. I don't ask for anything in return, except for the opportunity to possibly help you find a boat in your time frame. So to stay up on everything we upload, click that subscribe button below and stay tuned. Nice. Now, once you have your 262 Rinker in the water, because it's got to be in the water to run, and you have your plug-in, come back here underneath the sun pad and turn your batteries on. We have a single battery with a single switch right here. So we turn this into the on position, and the alternator will charge those batteries while that's in the on position. So that we don't make this video eight hours long, I'm going to include some links in the description down below. So below the video here, uh, down there's a drop arrow. I'll include links like how to operate tilt and trim, what to do when your boat won't start. Uh, just a bunch of helpful links that will help you improve your boat ownership experience when you're out here on the water having fun. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and talk about buttons, switches, and operating. So with the MPI motor like this, it's multi-port injected amazing. So all we do to start it is turn the key. You always make sure we're in neutral, our kill switch is up. From there, we don't have to choke it or prime it, we just turn the key. And she fires right up. Now, I've had a lot of people, when they're excited to accelerate, they have the, their thumb on the trim up button. The trim up button's right here on the shifter. That'll bring the out drive out of the water. If that's out of the water, you're just floating in the water, not going anywhere in the water. So, shifting, really easy. Push the button in, there's a definitive stop for forward. The Bravo 3s shift extremely smooth. They're dual rotating or they're counter rotating props with dual propellers. Uh, counter rotate, counteract the inertia of a one way spin so we go in a straight line all the time. Our acceleration is beyond that stopping point. Reverse, right here, definitive catch, throttle range beyond that. So we have tilt steering. You can zoom in right here so you can kind of set this wherever you want it. Uh, buttons and switches. We'll go through that blower, ventilates the engine compartment. Really, you should have that on at idle speed. Um, Multi-port injected motors like this, if you forget, it's really not as big a deal as if it would be if it were carbureted, but I always recommend turning that on when you get gas, after you get gas. Navigation light, that's driving at night. That's the red and green built in up front and the white light that plugs in the back. All the way down, anchor light, just the white light when you're stopped at night. Docking lights are the headlights up front, transom lights are a light bulb on the transom. Cockpit lights are on the interior, it has them right there. You can always go to O'Reilly's and buy LED bulbs for those, they just pull out and pop in. Panel lights, this is a dimmer right here. So when you have your navigation lights on, lights in here come on and then you can dim them up or down however you want it. Galley pump, that's for a freshwater pump if you ever want to use that. We never mess with them because the water sits in them and smells like sewage. Bilge pump, that's automatic. Um, if there's a bunch of water coming in the boat, that's going to pump it out, but it also has a float in there, so if water gets in there and it floats the float, it's going to kick water out the side. Horn, right there. 
accessory, God knows, sometimes at nighttime it'll turn on something silly. So this boat is equipped with captain's call exhaust and it really does sound amazing. One thing to remember though, only set this at idle speed. For the first part of the video, we're gonna go ahead and leave it off. We'll turn it on when we fire it up and get out there and have a really good time. So the reason we're only turning that on or off at idle speed is because you're choosing how your boat pumps out water, which it's using to keep the engine cool as well as the exhaust. So if you're going fast, you're putting a lot of fast water through the motor. What turns the flaps for this is pencil lead thin bars, little things. Um, there we go. So now that we know what the buttons and switches do. Gauges, we have our depth finder. That tells us how deep the water is. Tachometer, this baby literally just hit 200 hours. Here we have a four in one. Fuel, volts, engine temp, oil pressure, speedometer, tilt and trim. Tilt and trim is for the out drive. Comes up, and what goes up must come down. Back to the links in the description below. I strongly recommend watching that tilt and trim video if it's new to you, because it explains it. It's very simple. So now that we know about the gauges, buttons and switches, I'm gonna take the camera from Billy and we're gonna drive this boat. We're gonna see what the comfortable uh, cruise is, uh, what we do for water sports, and what our top speed is. We'll talk a lot about tilt and trim. So I'm gonna run the boat trim down. When we run the boat trim down, that's keeping the nose force down. We're at a negative trim angle. So the out drives back here, keeping that nose forced down into the water. That's where we're going to put the hardest load on a boat. So for all you guys that are out there test driving boats, run it as hard as you can trim down before you trim up. That's when you'll find out if it's going to hit, miss, spit, sputter, pop, fire, pop, fire, back, fire, pop, or fall on its face. Then we'll trim up and hit a top speed. Let's go. All right, now it's time to go for a test drive. We're going to have so much fun, even though it's super friggin' windy. So as you know, for water sports, you want to come to a complete stop. You get the tension out of the line by slow, steady, idle. Once you get the tension out of the line, depending on what you're doing, you want to go ahead and hop that guy right up. So with the Bravo 3, it sets the boat on plane pretty quickly. So we'll just go ahead and pop it right up. See how that nose just barely comes up. And once it settles, once you hit 30, go ahead and slow back down. You can slow back down to 25, you know, 20 mile an hour, whatever you feel most comfortable with. But this is a perfect speed right here for water sports. It's got a nice shape to the weight coming off the back. Now that we know what to do and how she runs for uh, that part of it, we're gonna go ahead and push it and find a nice comfortable cruise speed. I spoke wrong, that's the tack. Got your GPS going, Bill? It's 27 miles an hour, running at 27. So really right here, 27s, just play with our trim. But right around 3,200 RPM, this boat has a nice cruise speed, which is just a hair under 30, about 27 miles an hour. Right here, we're just verifying the speedometer against GPS. We're also gonna try, for the first time ever in our video, to add a GPS gauge, which we're gonna do, so, to the actual screen, so hopefully it works. If it works, it'll be on right now. Now we're gonna go ahead and punch it. So remember, we are all the way trimmed down, and we're gonna put a hard and heavy load on the boat, see what the acceleration is. So 35 miles an hour GPS, 40 miles an hour on GPS. We are trimmed all the way down, and she's running strong, guys. Not hit, missing, spitting, popping. It's just pushing right along. See how flat that nose is? So remember, we're pushing the nose down. The wave coming off the side of the boat's way up here. We're gonna trim up. Well, we're gonna turn. We're gonna get her nice and straight. And then we're gonna trim up. Look how beautiful it is. Leaves are starting to bud. We got dogwoods popping. Morel mushrooms growing. All right, one, two. You can hold it down. I just like to do that. And hopefully you can hear that. Now we're at a higher RPM. We're at 44 miles an hour. See the waves starting to come off the side of the boat. Let's push it some more. Three, four. Now we're really trimmed up high. 5,200 RPM. 45, 44 mile an hour right there. Let's give it to see what she's got here. 46, roughly. Now keep in mind I'm looking at the speedometer. If you guys at home are looking at the GPS gauge, well, I can't see that. It doesn't show on my screen. So upper 40s, when she gets nice and warm, it's gonna be a comfortable cruise speed. 
or top speed, I should say. Our comfortable cruise speed was right around 3,200 RPM at 27 miles an hour, just trimmed down. Now let's see how she turns. This is power steering. Another thing when you guys are test driving, test driving, test driving, test driving boats, you always want to go at idle, and I want you to turn it all the way. All the way one way, let it circle around. Now if you hear a chatter like a garbage disposal running dry, that means your gimbal ring or gimbal bearing is no good. Right here, no chatter. It will be definitive. This definitively has nothing, but you'll notice it. It's not in the wheel. It's back there, back towards the back of the boat. All of our gauges worked. Now, I understand from a customer standpoint, that should be common, right? Like you expect that, but just not to ruin everyone's expectations, it's very rare that all the gauges work at one time in a boat. This is one of those scenarios. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and open up that captain's call. The boat runs great. We know how to operate tilt and trim. We know that the stuff works. We know she runs in the upper 40s. So we're gonna open the captain's call up and just cruise back and have some fun while we do it. So a 262 Ranker is definitely a great all-around, all-purpose boat. Uh, things to check when you look at this model is, you know, the gel coat in the interior, make sure the seams and stitching are real nice. Um, but definitely a great model. This one's loaded up a little bit with upgraded stereo system, captain's call, which is harder to find. A lot of them will have 350s, some will have 5 liters. So the 6.2 is really just right. Um, a day like this when it's windy, you really feel like you're fighting to drive the boat because the wind's pushing you this way, the waves are coming that way, but it really handled itself fine. We never got squirrely. So for this part of the video, I'm mean, gonna I probably have to shut the camera off because it's a damn windy, but putting your boat in the water is real easy. You want to get yourself set up on land, get your coolers in the boat. Don't be that guy that everybody's waiting on, cussing at. But you back your boat in the water, as soon as you see the rear end float, you know you're good. 
Um, putting it on the trailer, the reason why a lot of people struggle is they get the trailers too deep in the water. The boat's floating here, the trailer's down here, it comes on right by the grace of God. So right up here, hopefully Billy can show you, we've got the front guide bugs out of the water. So since we have those front guide bunks out of the water, this trailer was made specifically for this boat. There's nowhere it can go but the right way. We're gonna go ahead and trim up a little bit too because we don't want to drag her out drive on the ground. I'm gonna end up in the fender just like that. That's what you get for running your mouth when it's windy. So let's try this again, shall we? It's nice to have the flip-up bolster seat so you can get up nice and tall. Maybe we should edit this out. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody makes mistakes. I was talking too much, paying attention not enough. So I'm gonna point my nose into the wind, and then last second, I'm just gonna slide it over so we don't let the wind catch our broadside here. That alarm is our shallow water alarm, so we're at 2.8 feet of water, so that's okay. Well, now that we got her on here, I'm gonna jump out front. Billy's gonna slowly accelerate where I crank up on the jack, because if you that's annoying. If you go herky-jerky, that's when you're going to make people fall over, drop stuff, and get hurt. So I just use slow, steady, applied pressure on the throttle, and that's it. Now we're going to take her out of the water. Uh, thanks for watching the video. We're going to finish up with a bunch of drone footage. Tomorrow, down in the description below, uh, we're going to have a, a condition walkthrough. We'll go through the inside and outside of this boat. So once again, just hit that little arrow. Most likely by the time you see this, it'll be on there if you're interested in looking at a 262 Ranker. My name is Brandon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the water. On me, down, back to me. Production, yeah. Down, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You're recording. Yep. You had a minute. You want me to start all over? No, it's not. What? Oh, God, I called 911. Shit. Go down, go back down. I forgot what I was gonna say, and then come back up. Oh, you just hold that, yeah. Gosh darn it. I just stuffed my phone in the cup holder. They will call back.